Beef Boys Garage. Today, we are building a custom off-road sway bar. And we are gonna be using, this is a 87 Toyota 4Runner locking hub. Some one inch uh, turn ground and polished um, 4140, I believe. And some five inch flat stock. And that's gonna be mostly what I need, except for a collar and a way to mount it up to the Jeep. So this is gonna be what we cut our arms out of. This is gonna be our um, steel for the actual sway bar part. This will be, this will take the torsional load. And then this is gonna be a cool little trick I'll show you guys. But basically we're gonna be able to unlock our sway bar just by turning the hub, just like unlocking your hub, but you'll unlock your sway bar. So this will eliminate the need for a disconnect in your link or anything. All you have to do, unlock it, and it's like you don't have a sway bar. So as you guys know, like an anti-rock, or there's a couple different competitors, they're like five or $600. And they, they say that they're good off-road, but they never fully unlock. So they are limiting your flex a little bit. This, I'm in it like, 200 bucks right now with the steel and the hub and the collar and this is going to be an on-road nice on-road off-road sway bar and if i'm rock crawling i can just disconnect it so i see this i see this as a huge win all you got to do is make it yourself you know so this should be a lot better than even an anti-rock that costs you six or seven hundred dollars so so the first thing i'm doing here is I have taken apart the Toyota hub. I just take the face off with these screws. And then I took out this big snap ring on the back here in the, I guess, housing and slid this out the back. And then I took out the smaller O-ring here and that's gonna allow me to take this off. So now I'll be able to just have this piece. And this piece, um, I am going to actually weld it to my sway bar material. Because I do not have a good way to cut splines. And I know you guys won't at home either. So you could go to a machine shop with your stock. Here, I'm going to get this cover off here. You could go to a machine shop and have them cut splines to match the inside of your locking hub here. But I am going to try doing it by welding this inner hub onto here. I think, I think it's going to work, but if it doesn't, uh, we'll see. welded this up it's not too bad considered i have no idea what i'm doing with a welder and these are two metals i'm not sure if they even should be welded together so we'll see if it holds long term but welded it all the way around here and on the front it actually after i cleaned it in the acetone welded pretty nicely so yeah a little couple uh nice bluing here looks kind of cool burning my glove 
Just a little tip here, I have my hub on my flat stock. I'm starting to lay on my arms and I have a through punch that fits nicely in these holes and I'm gonna mark all the holes so that um, this kind of stays in the right spot. And then I'm gonna start drawing out the shape of my arm onto this piece of flat stock so that I can cut it out correctly. I'm gonna do, I think around 14 inches from center of the hub to the center eyelet where my link will go down to my axle, but we will see. So I, uh, I've laid out my first arm here. So I have my hub here with, you know, the holes marked and then 15 inches, I put the end of my link. I, uh, I'll probably put a couple of hole options like you see on like the anti rocks and the other popular arms just for aesthetics and I might need to move it in the future to tune it so we'll see but uh I think I'm gonna try and plasma cut this by hand this would be really nice to have a CNC plasma cutter but I do not have that luxury So I'm working on the sway bar again and uh, I have some pillow blocks and that's what I'm going to mount to the Jeep with because the uh, factory rubber bushings, I, they wear out a lot and I don't like them. So to mount those, I made a couple plates as you can see and I am going to weld those to the bottom of the frame here and uh, drill and tap them so that I have something to bolt my sway bar to, something nice and strong. So I'm gonna get this frame cleaned up and throw some weld on there. So I'm back in the shop. I have my arms, they're cut out and um, nice and ground. And uh, I just wanna say uh, on these arms, I used a plasma cutter and then a grinder. And on the one arm I did use a mill at work, which is not necessary, but I don't quite recommend using a handheld plasma cutter. In my experience, it wasn't that good. Maybe if you're better with a plasma cutter, it might be good but I would probably try and use either a bandsaw, as I'm setting one up here, either use a bandsaw or a jigsaw um, or something like that where you can get a nice clean cut without making tons of mess and stuff. But uh, it can be done at home. You could even use a grinder. It's just gonna take a while and you're gonna have to be careful, but Anyway, I got these cut out, ground, so that they look decent. This is a hub from Tractor Supply. It's a one inch keyed hub. I have my arm for my side that doesn't have the Toyota 
locking hub on it. Mounted down, I have it all flat. A couple washers to shim it here so I can get a weld on the backside. Clamped it down, and uh, I'm gonna throw a bead here and then on the other side, and hopefully that should hold just fine. Check that out. Not too bad. I'll, I'll take that weld. I think that'll hold up. So uh, next up, I need to get a two inch hole drilled in the other arm so that, uh, here, I'll just show you. So I need a two inch hole, which is the outer diameter of this bearing I picked up at Tractor Supply so that it'll fit in the center here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna support the hub. It's gonna support the other side of the hub here from wobbling like this. So I've got my hole saw, a hole dozer. We're gonna see if that can put a hole in this half inch plate steel on my crappy drill press. So let's get to it. cut into the uh, beginning of this video to uh, kind of explain what material I actually needed because I ended up buying a little more material than I uh, needed in the end. So to save you guys some money, I will show you guys what I used. So this is pretty much what I needed to build the sway bar setup. Um, I will leave the link in the description for these end links and the pillow blocks and a bearing. This you'll have to get from a metal supply um, near you. Um, and then design credit. Um, mine varies a little from his, but the actual concept of this sway bar, um, I borrowed from this Instagram handle.
got my arms. Uh, I've got some holes drilled in them just for aesthetics. And then uh, got my holes drilled in for my link to bolt to. I, uh, I sanded them up with some like 320 grit sandpaper. And then I'm gonna clean these up and throw a coat of paint on them. So I got my arms painted up in this uh, Rust-Oleum bed liner rattle can. Um, it's just easy to touch up and these are gonna, these are my first arms so I might redo them or make them prettier because they're not perfect. But these are just uh, alternator tensioning um, rods. You can find them on eBay for like a big block or small block Chevy. They were cheap and they might do what I want. So I'm gonna try these first before I buy some heim joints and make custom links um, just for my sway bar. So I did some messing around and I got my link hooked to the link here. Just a zip tie just to hold this for mock up. And then over here I have my hub side. This one I just have tied up to the spring because I think I'm gonna have to move this out. So I'm probably gonna have to cut this off and uh, flip it because my I have a track bar mount that sticks out from the frame. And so I need to have this arm a little bit farther out so I can't have the link on the inside. I'm gonna have the link on the outside of the arm to hook to my mount on the axle. But anyway, as you can see, if it goes in anymore, it'll hit as it goes down but now i can also mark the position for these to drill these holes into the frame here so i got a a few things to do here So I'm doing final assembly. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, RTV on the back side of this arm and on the inside of this bearing to seal water out of the inside of this hub because you want that to uh, keep working properly. You don't want water getting in there and corroding anything. I forgot to mention, I did, I cut this keyway into here, quarter inch keyway into the shaft at work on a mill because I have the convenience, but there are videos of people cutting keyways with a grinding wheel. So it is possible to do this at home, but I, I had the, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to do this at work, so I didn't have to. So I uh, got the pillow blocks mounted on here, got that arm on, and now I'm just putting the key in and getting it in. Final assembly, hopefully it works.
As you guys just saw, that's how easy it is to unlock your sway bar and have it flex freely like you don't have a sway bar. Just get out, unlock it, and then you uh, do what you want to do. This isn't very flex, but this is just for demonstration purposes. You guys get the point. You should have full range of motion on your suspension um, when this is in free spool. It should have absolutely no problem flexing just like it did before. So that's pretty awesome. I'm super happy how this sway bar turned out. And uh, let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in buying these. I'm considering making these and selling them for, I don't know, 350, 400 bucks maybe. And uh, I, if you guys want them, I'll, uh, I'll look into making them for you guys. So drop a comment if uh, this is something that you guys would part, but purchase for your Jeep. And uh, obviously if you were going to buy it, you just have to tell me the distance that you wanted between your arms for your different vehicle. And uh, I would build it up and send it to you. So let me know on that. Otherwise, I think this is a great option. And uh, you save tons of money not buying an anti-rock uh, or those other super expensive off-road sway bars that don't even disconnect. They just claim that it helps you off-road. I, I don't believe it. This, you lose no flex. There's almost no disadvantage. So super happy with how this turned out. Hope you guys liked the video and you learned something from it.